Now that we've exported the IFC, let's take a look at the IFC project, IFC site, and IFC building attributes, and how we can correctly export them from our Revit model. Each of the attributes for IFC project, IFC site, and IFC building need to be assigned as a parameter in Revit in the project information. There are some built-in parameters that can be used to assign this information and it will get exported to the correct attributes. The building name will export to the name attribute of the IFC building entity. The project status parameter will export the phase attribute for IFC project. The project name parameter will export the long name attribute of IFC project. And the project number parameter will export the name attribute of IFC project. I'll go ahead and export the model again. Back in the exported IFC model in DDS CAD Viewer, I can now see that the attributes have been correctly assigned for each of the entities specified in the project parameters. I can see that the long name attribute of IFC building has also been assigned the same as the name attribute. Now I have used some of the built-in parameters, I need to add additional parameters to the project information to be able to export the remaining attributes for IFC project, IFC site, and IFC building. I'll therefore go to my project parameters, select add, and because project information parameters need to be instance parameters, I'm going to change the shared parameter file to the instance shared parameter file. I'll now select OK and I will search for the IFC description parameter. Keep the value as instance assign it to the project information category and I need to group the parameter under IFC parameters. Select OK, OK again and in project information in the IFC description value I can type in the IFC project description value. So this is the description attribute of the IFC project. I'll now go ahead and add the rest of the project parameters to the project information. I have now added all the additional parameters needed to complete the attributes for IFC project, IFC site, and IFC building. I can click OK, and I can then re-export the model. And I can now see if I select on IFC project, I have the name, description, object type, long name, and phase all completed. The same for IFC site and additionally for IFC building. Note that there are additional attributes that have now appeared such as the object type because I've now given these a value within Revit. So that's how to add project parameters to Revit to export the relevant attributes for IFC project, IFC site and IFC building. There are also some additional IFC site attributes that I can specify within Revit. The ref latitude and ref longitude attributes can be defined in the location 
properties of the model. And are the coordinate locations specified in the project address? And as you can see, I set this to be at the location of the Barcelona Pavilion in Barcelona. There is also a ref elevation attribute, which is currently set to zero meters. And this is the elevation of the Revit project origin. Here I am in a level zero zero floor plan. And if I enable temporary view properties, and in visibility graphics, I turn on the project base point and the survey point. The project base point is currently set to an elevation of zero. If I use the coordinates, specify coordinates at point, and specify the location at the project base point and set the elevation to 19 meters. So now the elevation of the project base point is 19 meters. And if I go into a south elevation and turn on the project base point, and the internal origin. Because the origin is at 19 meters, when I then re-export the model and select IFC site, I can see that the ref elevation attribute has updated to 19 meters. So this is the height of the Revit internal origin and not necessarily just the height of the project base point. I can also specify the site address attribute of IFC site and building address attribute of IFC building by exporting the IFC, selecting modify setup, selecting on project address, and here I can add some additional information such as the purpose, which I will set to user defined. The description, I will select to pavilion. Worry. And the user defined purpose. I can now say, for example, tourism. The address line one. I can type in. and the relevant other information that's required about the location of the building. I can also use this information to update the project information and I can assign this address to the IFC building and to the IFC site. I'll click OK and OK again, and I will overwrite the IFC. Unfortunately, DDS CAD does not display the site address or building address attributes. So I'm going to use BIM Collab Zoom to open the model. Again, we can start to see how the attributes are being displayed in this viewer. If I select on IFC site, I can see that the site address has been completed in here. And in the IFC building, the building address attribute has been completed here. If I go back to DDS CAD, you'll notice that I cannot see the attribute for site address or building address. So this is just one of the discrepancies that I've found in reviewing IFC data from multiple platforms.
going to the IFC documentation page for IFC building, under the attribute inheritance, there are two additional attributes called elevation of ref height and elevation of terrain. There is currently no way to export these attributes from within Revit. However, notice here the building address as the attribute which we have successfully exported and viewed in BIM Collab Zoom. Now that I have added the attributes correctly to the IFC entities for project, site and building, let's have a look at adding properties and quantities. If I go back to the IFC for documentation web page and go on the page for IFC site, if I scroll down, I have the attribute inheritance in this table here. But if I keep scrolling down, I come across the property sets. So here are all the property sets that are applicable to the IFC site entity. So let's have a look at how we can add the property sets to Revit so they export correctly to IFC. And let's take this PSET land registration property set as an example. Revit will automatically export properties to the correct property set from Revit if they are named exactly the same as the IFC properties we wish to export and that they are placed in the IFC parameters property group. So if I go to project parameters, select add, go to shared parameters, and again, I need to add this information to the project information. So it needs to be the instance shared parameter. I will type in land ID to find the land ID property. Set to project information and group under IFC parameters. I'll do the same for the is permanent ID and land title ID parameters, like so. So I have these three new parameters here. I'll go to project information and I will simply type in a sample value just for demonstration in here. I will select the is permanent ID as a tick or boolean yes, and specify a land title ID here. I'll now export the IFC again. And once it has been exported, if I click on the IFC site, I can now see that under the property and quantity sets, the property set land registration has been created and the land ID is permanent ID and land title ID parameters or properties have been added to the IFC site. So as long as the parameters within Revit read exactly the same as the IFC properties, then they shall export correctly under the correct property set. Taking a look at the IFC building documentation. Let's have a look at an example with a few properties from PSET Building Common and PSET Building Use. I have added the relevant parameters as project parameters. So here I can again type in some placeholder information. We'll select is landmark to yes. And we'll set the market category as an example to tourism. If I then export the IFC again, and we have a look in DDS CAD, if I select IFC building, I can now see that under the P set building common property set, I have the is permanent ID, building ID construction method and is landmarked, set at the appropriate values.
and I also have the market category property under PSET building use. Note that there are other parameters or properties such as reference and number of stories that have automatically been exported and assigned a value from Revit. The reference is the Revit category here from which the data comes from, so project information, and the number of stories is based on the number of IFC building stories that are contained within the model. I can, however, override these default values. For example, I want to override number of stories, just simply say one. I can simply add a project parameter to project information with number of stories, type in the value of one. Note that this parameter must be a integer value. So I can't type 1.5, I must enter an integer. And if I look at the IFC documentation, I can see that for the number of stories parameter, the value should be an IFC integer value. I can click OK and then re-export the model. And upon viewing the property sets for IFC building, I can see that the number of stories has been updated to the value of 1. So that is how to override the value of a property that Revit automatically exports but has not been defined within the Revit project. There are a number of quantity sets for IFC site and IFC building, such as those contained in the QTO building base quantities. However, at the time of recording, I have not found a way to export the quantities through parameters from Revit. So hopefully this video has given a good introduction into how to assign attributes to the IFC project, IFC site and IFC building entities and then also assign appropriate properties from the property sets within IFC.